Good morning. This is Gaming Perspectives with Saul, Angeline, and today we're talking about age in RPGs. Age in RPGs. I'm feeling a little aged right now. <laughs> so back in the old days, back when I was a kid, that I, was the old days. When I was playing A D and D. Anyway, when I was playing A D and D. I remember, I don't know where the chart it was in the Dungeon Master's Guide or the Player's Handbook. It had to be in the Player's Handbook. And it, supposedly it was optional. I, I don't remember things in the AD&D be, book being optional, only in the sense that sometimes we used the rules and sometimes we didn't. But there was this little box, a little chart about if you were a certain age, They would, I think they call it old and very old or something like that. And in the box, it gave you a bonus and a detriment for being old if you were a certain age. And the bonus was if you were, I forget what the age bracket was, but if you were a certain age, it would give you a plus one to intelligence and wisdom, but it would give you a minus one to constitution and strength. And if you were really old... You died? Well, there's that too, but no. It would you get a plus two instead of plus one to intelligence and wisdom and minus two to constitution and strength. This uh, I guess this is upon character creation as before your character enters adventuring. And the whole idea was, I guess, is that as an older person would not have uh, as high a strength and the highest constitution, age gets to you, and but you would be wise and smarter. I know I should have asked this question before you started pontificating. <laughs> no, it's not pontificating. It's true. But my question is, why would you play an old guy well, or a woman? I think the idea was if you wanted to play an older person, you could, and then there'd just be some benefit to it. I think the only people that would really want to even try to do this would be uh, wizards, right, back then. Because wizards would definitely gain a big deal, a big benefit from a higher intelligence and a higher wisdom. Maybe a, 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 a priest back then, which was, a, what is it, a cleric. The only, the only question on that is, and I, and I only know this because you told me, something about haste. So if you're a wizard and you do haste, you get older? No, no, no. If you cast haste on somebody, which was a, a spell back I think it was a third level spell on somebody. That person who got hasted would lose, well, they would gain a year of age. So you could kill people if you casted haste on them too many times. Yeah, but it would, I mean, it would take a while. Yeah, I think back then haste would, remember, it turns were longer back then. So I think you could hate somebody for 10 minutes. Ah. So it'd be like, <sighs> but if you, you were adventuring enough and you used that as a tactic, you could age quite a bit. I don't mean it would, I guess you, it would take like maybe 30 he, 30 haste spells for you to really feel the effects. Let's say you've started at the 16, 18, 19, 20, 30 haste would make you 50. Physically 50, which is not even close. I don't think that's, that might have been close to the threshold of that first, uh, box the first age box uh, first benefit slash detriment for being older I, but i think it might have been older it might have been 55 you know the classic uh time Old to retire man time. yeah middle age or post middle aged post buying a corvette air age for me <laughs> <laughs> uh so i think it's a very interesting thing that chart but i almost guarantee None of my friends at the time ever used it. Never, nobody <laughs> wanted to play an old person. Well, if you're playing D and D, your characters usually, if when they start out first level, you you roll up a character. You're what between sixteen and twenty. Well, back then, uh, wizards were older. Like there was a chart. Like yeah, you're right. If you were a fighter, you'd be between the age of sixteen. Eh, that'd be really young to about twenty two. But if you were a cleric, you would your age, you would roll a die, and it would be between the ages of like twenty one and twenty seven, and a wizard would be between the ages of twenty two and thirty. Or they don't even have that anymore. Yeah, I know. It, it just says man be pamby now. You just pick, pick your age, whatever you want. Yeah, 
it's too loosey goosey for us OSR types. <sighs> okay, <laughs> weirdo. So there was this question on on uh, Reddit about age, and they were talking about does any does any system ever deal with age? And I that got me thinking about this subject. They got me thinking about that chart in AD and D. <laughs> and since then, I never really thought about it too much. But there's certain games and certain genres that age definitely has a factor, right? Well, I I remember talking about age a long time ago when we did a podcast about hit points. And, hit points. Well, and it was a couple <laughs> years ago. And I remember we had that co- a conversation about if you wanted to play an older character how would it affect your hit points or stamina or whatever? Oh, okay. And so I know people have thought about it before, but this time when I looked it up, there's actually a game called In Between, and you play mice. Oh, In Between, yeah. I think it just recently came out. It's supposed to be really neat. I think it's, uh, I, I mean, either it's French or an Italian-based game, but supposedly the art's really neat. It has a really interesting what is it? Uh, an interesting idea because you play mice, right? Yes, and it and it age has a lot to do with it because you don't live very long as a mouse. I guess you don't. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I never... And it, they the way that they do it is here we go. When you're young, you have very few dice, lots of luck. When you're middle aged, and middle aged for a mouse, I think is four or five. Um, you have more dice, less luck, and no no penalties. But when you hit older age, which I believe it was eight, is when you lose all of your luck. So you have even more dice, no luck, and age penalties. So dice is what like their skill skill points or something like that. The the yeah probably because yeah, the more dice you get, like more you're better at things, right? To yeah. accomplish things. Well, that that's what uh, what other system was I thinking about? I don't you talk about the in between. I oh, I think I was thinking of uh, how ingrained into the system it is is uh, Tales from the Loop, right? And it's exactly the same thing. I don't know. I don't know the system that I don't, it, in between it, I don't, uses the article that I read didn't say what system it uh, was. But in Tales from the Loop, you have the dice pool system, and you have. Uh, a certain amount of skills or that you can choose and in in uh, Tales from the Loop the younger you are you have less skill points to spend but you also have more luck dice so and then as you get older you get more skill points because you know more stuff but as you get older you also lose that luck it's hard to quantify that maybe it's that kid wonder and then by the time you're by the time you transition to go from the age of fifteen to sixteen, you've become an adult and you lose and you no longer can play Tales from the Loop because you've become an adult and no longer have that sense of kid wonder. So I think it really plays into the into the into the game that you're playing in that game. And I mean it really it really kinda I don't know what 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 I would say it is, but it really reinforces the idea of the idea of kid wonder. Of how kids, when they're young, can get away with a lot of stuff, and like, man, those kids are really lucky. All I got to point to is like my whole family, right? When they were young, they they did all kinds of crazy stuff that I would never do. But as but as you get older, well, they're, they're still damn lucky. But most people, as they get older, they start paying for those uh, indiscretions of uh, indiscretions of what of not making a wise choice. Right, you know, you get hurt yes. as you get older instead of just dusting yourself off and getting off the ground with no injury. So I think I, like I said, I've never, I've never seen it in between, but I think that's what they're playing at, and it's like ingrained in the system, right? The young mouse is very lucky, is very uh, uh, probably more resistant to you survive, survive. In fact, because if you're playing a one-year-old mouse, it says that you get an extra, extra point for living. For making it to adulthood, he survived the year, the first year. Well, and and the person that and in the article that I was reading, the person said that this game specifically has to do with the age, right, of the mouse, and it, right. it's built into the system. Same with tales for the tales from the loop. Yeah, yeah, it's built into the system. So they seem like games that that have thought about it. And this person said, and and I never thought had thought it. He said, 
you shouldn't worry about it if it's not built into the game you shouldn't even consider that because if you're playing D D, you're playing a hero right who's going out to do something. well if you're playing fifth edition yes okay or for, or fourth edition or third edition yeah but i mean i'm talking about like if you play a D D or osr style where they're trying to be a little bit more gritty I wouldn't say realistic, but I think, yes, Gritty is one, or at the very least, Fane being more realistic in a way, in a, in a certain sense. But like I said, it was an optional rule in AD&D, and by the time 3rd edition came out, I don't think it's even in there. Well, he was saying that you shouldn't worry about it. It shouldn't right. be something that you're, you're, you put a lot of a thought into. If you're rolling up a and d character, you're going to be rolling, most uh, likely, you're going to be rolling up a a 18 year old guy who wants to go out and fight or or a wizard or a, a sorcerer who's young because you're you're going to start the game out you don't usually start out at 12th level unless no you, you're right you know. does Shadowrun have any rules on age I, got I, I didn't think about it, Shadowrun I but don't it, remember any rules on age I would have to but but we did I we thought I thought about Shadowrun and age because you, you really, it doesn't matter what age you are in Shadowrun because you have all kinds of stuff you can add to your, like you could augment yourself to take care of those problems. Yeah, except unless you're a wizard, right? Or a sorcerer or whatever you call it in Shadowrun, a magic user. Cause... They live a long time if they don't kill themselves. <laughs> I'm just saying. You mean burn themselves out? <laughs> yeah. 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 Kill themselves, I see, yes. So the other one you had, I had, you mentioned, and I had, I mentioned, I wrote it down for you, or on my notes, was Traveler. Yes, Traveler. <laughs> I know it's a, uh, you love that game. Uh, uh, it's not a bad game. Um, the character creation, if you do it the old way or from the, the books that I was the little given. little black books. The, to, to use when, to make your character. It, you want to be able to stay in the military long enough to get enough skills, right? Because you want skills. Right. But you don't want to stand there long enough to, by the time you get out, you're decrepit. Right. And can't and, do anything. And that can happen. Because you roll randomly. Yes. On a, on a table. Because you can kill yourself, too, when you're trying to create your character. So there you go. Well, Space Opera did the exact same thing. It had almost the exact same table about uh, how many tours you want to go in. And if you, you could re-up uh, by rolling dice to... But what do you call it? Not re up, re up, but re enlist. Re -enlist. They call it, right. In the military. And Space Opera had a lot of military type stuff. There was like the, the Explorers, not Corps. club, but you know, the Explorers uh, Corps. Corps or whatever. And if you want to be a scientist and stuff and get those kind of points, they have that you could get killed in pre playing. The, your character could die in, in character creation. I thought it was funny that. People talking about age in RPGs went to Traveler as an example because it really is kind of built into the system as, right. you're, as you're making your character. Yeah, because right? the longer you're in the, you're in the service, the more points you get to spend, and the more money skills. you can have, and right. that kind of stuff. You right, get, uh, rewarded by rank, you get to go up in rank. And unfortunately, when you are making your travel character, you, you usually end up with. A mediocre guy, right? Because <laughs> otherwise, if you don't, you're either dead or have you can't do anything. So mediocre is okay. I think that was my character is when I when we made my character. Yours would have died, and what what happened was it got the character got a a bad injury that yeah. caused them to leave. But uh, my character was only in for like one three. It was really low amount of tours. So there and was no so, money. There was no money. I didn't have very many skills. I was like, I felt like, what would I do on a ship? I was just like the gopher, maybe. Yeah, my character, when the last character I made, because I think I killed one of them, or I let it die because I didn't want to use it because yes. it was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I ended exactly. up with a, with like 3,000 credits or whatever. Well, that was the problem with Traveler in my book, is that you were gi given a character, basically, I mean, you rolled them up, but it was just everything was random. The age was random, uh, the skills were random. So when I came across Space Opera, where you actually got to choose your skills, of course, the longer you were in the service, the more points you got to spend to buy skills. But at least you got to choose what skills you wanted and make the character more or less the one you wanted instead of being handed a character that 
he didn't care for. And some people really kind of like that, the idea of ha- being able to play a character they didn't plan on playing. Well, see, that that's the thing when you talk about um, old school gaming, right? The Traveler is one of the oldest ones. Yep. And the idea that you're going to just get what you get is kind of like, so you know, that's that's it. That's it. And that makes a lot of sense for if if you really want to do old school kind of stuff, right? Well, I, and then I remember not... I guess it's a pretty old system too, but we were playing, making characters for Call of Cthulhu, and I had this idea of making this tough cop, right? I wanted a tech, tough New New York, and I actually was thinking of Chicago. And as experienced Call of Cthulhu fate, players fate. tell you, roll it up before you decide what kind of character you want to play. Yeah, well, I mean, they <laughs> will get see what you get. The GM and another player, Shannon, who runs a lot of Call of Cthulhu and uses that system, they tell me don't choose. The character that you want to play, the character will tell you what kind of character you're gonna play. So I'm like, I want to be a cop, and you know, I had all these ideas of like background and stuff. And then I roll up a correct character who has like no dexterity, <laughs> it wasn't strong. And then you also roll randomly your skills, almost I think, or something. But I, I was like, well, this guy can't be a cop; he's a wimp. So, but he did have a lot of like academic skills. So I'm like, oh. So you went with a professor, history professor, which turned out to be pretty r- r- spot on. What a typical character for Call of Cthulhu is. So I don't know if there's any age problems in that game either. Call of Cthulhu basic role playing. I didn't. That one wasn't yeah, in the articles I read. List. So another one that comes across was Ars Magica, which I've never, I've heard of it, of course, but I've. I was even telling Jolene, I don't have a single book of Ars Magica in my collection. And I told Saul that's freaking amazing that he doesn't have that in his collection because he's got everything else. And it's a pretty old game. I mean, I've heard of Ars Magica for at least 20 years, if not more. So in that game, you said, you kind of looked it up and you noticed that or read that it has a lot to do with age or age is very ingrained in the system, kind of. yeah. You only get experience four times a year, it says, and you start aging at 35. <laughs> As the game progresses, you become more powerful, but you're subject to magical contamination. I guess they call it warping. Wow. Which means something different to me. And your stats can drop as you get older. And each aging roll is scary. With the bad roll, your character can die, which I tell us all, oh, I understand. <laughs> I've rolled up a traveler character. I guess this is a you play all magic users. Yes, you, yeah. I think I don't know what system it is, but but anyway, uh, ours magica. It's like I said, that's very interesting. I I never even heard, I mean I've heard of it. I never looked more looked into it at all. So I am completely ignorant of everything ours magic. I know a lot of people who play it really like it. Obviously, if they play it, they like it. They keep playing it, but uh, it's one of those games that I've never really come across. But it's interesting to how you say that their aging starts at 35. <laughs> I mean, the, the the effects of aging starts at 35. But I guess the, the, that might be because they believe that throwing, using all this uh, magical energy really, really uh, has an effect on your body. And most of the people that answered these questions for the Reddit user and in the articles I was reading, they said, even if the system doesn't have a aging component to it, right. just think about it like it in real life, right? As Ooh. you age, you could lose your, what is it? Your, your stats for physical. The so you physical can have stats. more physical, less physical stats yeah you might slow down the dexterity using dnd or your constitution your constitution is going down because it takes you longer to recover from coronation and stuff yeah Uh, there aren't that many old superheroes except in feng shui oh yes Uh, that i did write that down it was the last one and in that game doesn't matter what age you are yeah because the ancient guy the ancient fighters are are really good. The old guys, the, the old. ancient, yeah, the ancient. Uh, what the, is it? The ancient kung fu master or something? Yeah. And they and there's no penalty for for them being able to jump these great distances and having prodigious leap. They jump twenty feet or thirty feet and bounce around walls and stuff like that, dodging bullets. No, it doesn't matter. 
And they're hilarious because usually when people play decide to play with that character, they they go with it, right? They they play the old man that looks like he's not going to be able with to do anything. He has yeah. a cane. He's he's slow, right up until the time that he kick somebody's butt <laughs> literally and then on the other end they have the was it i forget what it was called the, the scrappy kid the scrappy kid that's exactly i was thinking street urchin or something but and the, steve played a character like that he right. had the best time playing that yeah he loved that freaking character and he played like a what a 12 year old with a with a skateboard and he used a skateboard to like bust people's heads open and stuff and and he dodge and ran around and you know put put a a kid in a very perilous situations but feng shui is is that genre of the fantastical right it's like yeah like the movies like the the, that's what is it that's the whole idea is based on a hong kong action theater type stuff and and i think i think because of that age doesn't matter kind of thing is because if you look at movies depending on what movies you watched but there was movies where old people are running around up buildings and jumping off buildings and kicking people in the head. And then you have these kids who are running around doing almost the same thing. And know? there's some movies where they actually show them dodging the bullets. I forget oh, yeah. which movie it was, but it was on a dock. I, I, I don't remember which movie it was, but the, they went into slow motion when the bullets were flying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the person like went back and. Oh, uh, and- yeah. <clears throat> I forget. And the bullets went all around. Bulletproof Monk? Is that I, the one? I think it, I don't was remember. Chow Young Fat? Was Chow Young Fat in it? <clears throat> Could be. Yeah. Anyway, so exactly. And that's the kind of Bulletproof Monk. And then there's a ton of uh, other action movies that came out of Hong Kong that, that was uh, that fantastical. It didn't matter what age people were, people could bust out the kung fu moves and karate moves and beat up on people. So I think. That's different from the other games we're discussing where age does matter, and in this one, it completely doesn't matter because the genre doesn't ask for it, right? The genre says, no, it doesn't matter. I was going to talk, I think we already talked about Tales from the Loop, but you mentioned Pendragon, and Pendragon is a totally different game in the sense that age doesn't really matter, but because... It if does in a way, I mean, because you're, if you go through the whole campaign or whatever... right. Your knight might die, right? And then somebody else from your family might take that. Place right. Or, so that's what, yeah, because yeah. you, you, more important, if you play a campaign in, in Pendragon, you are part of a family, part of a, yeah, a, a large family usually, because you want a large family, because ca- knights die. die. People die, knight, knights die. But like one of my friends was running a campaign, and another friend of, of ours was playing in it, and he was very being very aggressive knight, would always enjoy in battle, and he had multiple character oh, deaths. Yeah. And so what you do is you play a knight, a part of a family, and the, the, what's important is the family. So uh, you can only adventure or you can only be a knight for so long before they, you just can't do nightly you can't stuff. physically right. take, do it. it takes its toll so the game usually is played over generations of a family and that's what when they played the great pen dragon campaign which supposedly is like 85 years of playing in game in, in not in game time but in <laughs> in the world time there's no one night's gonna live throughout that whole campaign because they don't live that long and the game's pretty dangerous and, and, and deadly Kind of well, like, and knights usually retired early because they got a they were were given a duchy or a, a maybe not a duchy but a, a manor, right? Right, exactly. And they uh, get married and they have kids and they take care of the area, right? Well, and just because a knight is retired, and I'm I'm going to say they probably retire in their early thirties, maybe. Oh, really? That early? I would say not forty. Unless they're unless they're like a because. Yeah. Yeah, people didn't live that long back then. Well, not only that, being a knight's very dangerous and but those I mean, if you look if you think about it, a guy in his thirties, a man, a woman, yeah. whatever, in their thirties, yes. retired at a place, that doesn't mean that they're not strong still. It just means they're not out doing the adventuring. Yeah. Yes. I would think thirty five to forty would probably be a, a range where all that eh, I would think over forty. Before all that punishment of your body 
it starts catching up to you, right? Before you get those creaks and aches and pains and and you're like, oh man, creaks in your back. That type of stuff finally catches up to you. I think, I mean, now, now it's not so much, right? We live in a modern world where we don't have such an arduous life unless you're like a soldier, unless you do really physical work like a construction worker. But then again, I don't know too many old construction workers, you know, who are in their 50s. They become the the the, uh, the major dormo, the, the the lead people, so that they're <laughs> they not point and say, yeah. "Yeah, go do that over there." I think that is true. So in modern days, even though we live longer, I I think that just shows you that that really tough physical type of labor, which adventuring is kind of almost the same. I mean, adventuring is probably worse, uh, except for maybe soldiers that are, have been going, to, you know, to deployments around the world would equal uh, what adventures face, you know, the, the whole, the art, the physical toughness that you have to have to have a backpack on your back, swing a sword for any length of time, a hammer or whatever in combat, wear armor, blah, blah, blah. I think 40 would probably be the limit that you're like, oh, yeah, this is, it's tough getting up on that horse now. <laughs> Unless you're a mercenary and that's just what you have to do, right? Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. Hopefully by that time you got some sort of nest egg that you can maybe do something else. Some consulting on the side, maybe. I wonder, sometimes I wonder why these questions come up and like, what, are, what, what would you do if somebody wanted to play an old person in your game? And and then you look at these, you go and you research all these games and you go, oh, obviously lots of people have asked this question and it's even built into some games, right? Right. To give it more, and I think it's just to give it more flavor, to, to give your character some depth. So you want to play a young person, that's pretty easy because you young people believe they know everything and, <laughs> and can do everything, right? And whether they can or not, that's the roll of the dice. So as you get older, if you want to play an older person in the game, then you're going to have more wisdom and stuff, but less physical ability to to punish yourself. Yeah, I really think it has to do with the genre, right? Because like like that mouse game, it it it's inherent in the system. It's inherent in the system, right? The violence is inherent in the system, but. Uh, the mouse game, you're playing a mouse, and, and mice don't live to be 100 years old. Right. So, and I think there's some urgency in that in that mouse's life to do what it wants to do. And then, like, Tales from the Loop, the same thing. You're only a kid for a little while, and I think, and I think the central part of that idea, except for I grew up in the 80s, I grew up in a very idyllic upbringing, in a sense. You know, I rode my bike everywhere. I played out with my neighborhood and stuff like that. It wasn't Mayberry, but it was my form of Mayberry. And I think when they created the game, the creators had this idea of their their uh, game that they're making. They wanted it to be about that sense of wonderment as a kid and how and how when you get, as you go older, that sense of wonder, wonderment goes away. And I think it was very important for them to include that kind of shift from a little kid to a young adult in their game. And the way you do that is by, by showing how age affects the kid's ability to be not as lucky as they were when they're little. And as you're older, well, one of the things you do is you gain knowledge. And, and I think it's very interesting. I, I think uh, it was very well, it was very, it was in, in, it wasn't an accident that they did this, right? It was in, it was something they purposely did, and I think you compare that to Feng Shui, who, who says don't care about age. So I think it's so dependent on the genre and what kind of feeling you're trying to get through your, your game. In D and D, age doesn't really fifth edition. Age doesn't matter. You could be slugging it out until you want to retire. And other games like that, but then other games kind of make it important that or make it like, well, you know, when you're 65 years old, you probably. Start suffering a little bit. So maybe, your, your physical attributes are going to take a hit. And then, then like, so a lot of it is just optional rules, right? That that little chart that from the from the aid indie book supposedly was optional. And I think only let's say a, a GM who's interested in having a more realistic look at D and D or a realistic take or in their game in their campaign, they want it to seem a little bit more realistic. They go, well, 
you really, you know, if you're 60, you're going to have to suffer some consequences for being that age. Uh, sorry. And a lot of this stuff was probably house rules. I mean, people house rule stuff all the time. And I think this, this is the kind of stuff that you house rule. And that's why that one person said, if it's not in rules, I wouldn't worry about it. But some GMs obviously worry about it. They go, well, you know, I don't think you should be. Well, because someone comes and says to them, I want to play a three-year-old or I want to play a, a 67-year-old, right? Yeah. So they have to come up with a with a rule for that. Or some, a consequence, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You can't play a three-year-old because they can't talk <laughs> very well. Well, some kid, three-year-olds can talk. They can't take care of themselves. Well, there is that. Yeah, is that. <coughs> and they handle things by, like, having a tantrum yeah so that's probably not good for adventuring right but anyway yeah i think a lot of it if it's like i kind of agree with that guy the person who said that if it's not a rules don't worry about it but then again it all depends like uh, what kind of game you're trying to run and what the gm wants to what kind of things will impact his game or their game when they're running it and having a 65 year old swordsman uh, might be a little bit too incredible for them. It just goes to show you that players come up with ideas for their characters that bring up these questions, right? Right. right. Cuz I wouldn't have thought about it if I'm going to play a D&D game or something. I want to play somebody in the in my 20s right. where you're don't have any problems. Right. <laughs> That's what you want to do. <laughs> yes. No, no old war injuries propping up. <laughs> yeah. You got a crick in your neck or back. You don't pop every time you stand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, so uh, I think a lot depends on your GM and what they're trying to accomplish or the feel they want for the game. And certain games want a certain type of feel. They, wanna, they want to represent a game where they want, to do, they want a game where age does have an impact on the character. And it all depends on the game you play. And the genre. And that will kind of determine the kind of character you want to play. I mean, right? You're going to roll oh, yeah. up a character. Right. Unless you're playing Traveler, then you're, it's built in. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there you go. <laughs> if you want to include age as a GM, you should probably talk to your players about it before heading there and make the characters. And also as a player, if you plan on playing a character that is really young or really old, you should probably talk to the GM and, hey, is there going to be any problems with this? If I want to do it this way, and and then there's the games where all that's already in the rules. So I think a lot of it, it, if it's a game that doesn't already have in the rules, ask the GM, and then as a GM, you should tell tell your players. You know, this is like a little house rule I got. Can't play somebody who's ten years old, and if you're over fifty five, you're gonna have consequences to your character. You're gonna have a negative two. Uh, to something or you know it doesn't have to be exactly what that chart was but i could see you know depending on what kind of job like a fighter they probably might lose some strength or they may not even lose strength they might lose something else like constitution where it does affect the character but not in their primary stat right because i mean if you work out and like you're a lumberjack lumberjack into your into your 60s I know for a fact that you can be a, one tough freaking lumberjack and strong as hell. So, <laughs> so, so I mean, I don't know. Some people, maybe it's just genetics. You might be able to stay off uh, the horrors of age uh, physically for a long time. But uh, so the GM might give you a pass. It don't matter. So there you go. Hopefully, this helps you with some ideas for aging in RPGs. Yes, and you have a good day. <laughs>